All right. I really love this one in the message. It's 1 Corinthians 9. It says, even though I'm free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily become a servant to any and all in order to reach a wide range of people. This is key. I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. <laughs> Man, that really sums it up. That's the message version of the Bible. Okay, like that really nails it for me because I'm working in a secular workforce. I'm surrounded, right, Dan? Get more secular than our business? Not, not, not too much more secular. So like you're with people that are, are living off a way different map, a way different rule book. They want to go out and get drunk after work, and they want to take the client out and get the client drunk because if we don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. And this isn't a way to live, right? We know that. And yet how can Daniel prosper in Babylon? He said, I'm not eating your food. And he was made the head of the whole deal. Right? So people will see that difference on you. Even if they mock you in the beginning, they're just testing you. They're testing you. It's like, yeah, man, go ahead. I get it. Or, or you really want to get convicted, get the movie. Um, ah, sorry. I'll think of it. Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, my God. You want to get convicted about a guy who took it and just kept taking the beatings that they were giving him and lived out Christ for them and ended up saving their lives, if you know the movie. It's a little graphic, I'll warn you. It's a war movie, and it's too graphic for, for most people, actually. But the part about this man living out his Christian walk, unbelievable. True story, too. And, and it's just amazing because the real people that he saved were still alive. You know, this was World War II. At the end of the movie, the guy that was harassing him the most is sitting in front of the camera, and he's crying, and he's gone, I can't believe he would save me after the way I treated him. I was dying on the battlefield. And he came, risked his life to come and get me. See, that's such a beautiful image. And then there's a scene where none of the soldiers are ready to go yet. And the, the general calls and says, why haven't you taken that hill yet? He said, we're waiting. The guy said, you're, they were supposed to start 15 minutes ago. Why didn't you start? He said, we're waiting. You're waiting for what? I gave you the order to go. We're waiting for Dawes. He's praying. <laughs> We're not going until he gives us the green light. They knew, had the re they knew how, who had the real authority. It wasn't the general. It was a guy who knew how to hear from God. True story. See, that's what we need. We need those people that set the bar for us. Mother Teresa, you know, you name it, like these heroes of the faith that said, I'm following Jesus. You know, you can have the whole world, but I'm following Jesus. And, man, that's the person who just shines. And, and there it is. I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world. I mean, Jesus could have said that. I kept my bearings in the Father, but I entered your world. I never sinned, but I entered a world that was corrupted with sin. And yet when Mary is grieving over her brother dying, he weeps. He felt the grief of humanity over that. And he knew he was going to raise the brother from the dead, right? Lazarus. And... Uh, he still wept. Why? Because he identified with Mary and he identified with her pain. And sometimes weeping with somebody could be the best, kindest thing you could do, right? Man, he could have said, don't, don't cry. He'll be alive again. No, he wanted, he wanted to live our lives and feel what we feel because so, he knows everything about us now, see? He walked in our shoes. I'm going to just skip a little ahead. This is really key. Ephesians 4, he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, for what? Say it with me. The equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That was very weak, class. I'm sorry. Let's do it again. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's much better. Thank you. You all get a gold star. <laughs> and a free bagel after church on <laughs> Sunday. So I have to be equipped, right? I come in and I'm born again, but I'm a baby, and I have to go from milk to the meat. And a great way to do that is getting involved in ministry and, and just serving the, the kingdom somehow, acting like this foot washer, you know, Jesus, our king. I love the contrast here. He's the king of kings, and he's washing Peter's feet. 
He's a servant king. We, we learn his character by serving other people. And you could have a really important big law firm job in New York City, and all of a sudden you're coming, you're serving the children's ministry here. And you're working with people who aren't so fully qualified. But we're all part of the body of Christ. We're all in life-giving relationship with each other. We don't look down on each other because of our education or our rank or whatever. We just operate together, and the Lord allows us to flow together. And we learn from that person that's different than we are, that we didn't expect to learn from, but God could speak through a donkey. <laughs> so speak through anybody to us if we're willing to just humble ourselves and do it, right? So this is really key. Being equipped is, is an ongoing, lifelong process. Equipping the saints for the work, I heard a, a scholar say, for the work of their ministry, not just open-ended work of the ministry, but the work of Jim's ministry. I'm supposed to equip him for his and John and Easter and each one of you. Part of my role is helping equip you for your ministry. Just like you raise your children up in the way they should go. And they're all different, right? So you can't just place one little cookie cutter on each one of them. And that takes a lot of work, doesn't it? Because you've got to hear the Lord about what that person's ministry should be. And look, you know, like that can be really controlling too. Somebody could say, I think you should go do this. Look, you don't have final say. God has final say. But the minister should be there as a guide to help that person. This is what I see in you. This is the gifts I'm seeing in you. We want to help you cultivate that gift. We want to equip you for the work of your ministry. Because when people are equipped in the right zone, that edifies the whole body of Christ. What's the end? That 14 says that we should no longer be children that are tossed to and fro. Right? If you're not equipped... You don't know what to listen to. And, you you know, there's all kinds of things. It reminds me of my field, which is economics. And people are saying, what do you think the market's going to do? I heard this guy say this. <laughs> well, you can hear any guy say anything at any time. Somebody's predicting a crash. Somebody else predicting a boom. Somebody's saying buy gold. Somebody else saying do this. And half the time, they're just trying to sell a product. And, man, it's really confusing. So people get all caught up with this stuff. So I don't want to be tossed to and fro. I want to be anchored to true north. This is the compass. This is my guide. That gets me through the, the storms. And, you know, I got my hand on the rudder, but he's got his hand on it with me. And that's getting me through this whole thing. I don't want to be tossed to and fro. But speaking the truth, we may do what? May a little louder. One more. That's it, right? See, that's a milk to the meat. By, by being equipped by these gifts that God gave to the body of Christ, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, in this, in this example, they're equipping us so that we can not be tossed around, that we can get through these problems in life, navigate the problems, and then we can grow up into the thing, all things into him who is the head, who is Christ. And I love 16. From whom the whole body joined and knit together, but while every joint supplies. So all these different gifts get knit together in this huge, big tapestry because all of us are being equipped in the way we should go and not being cookie-cuttered into what the pastor thinks you should do, right? But in the, in the gift that, that God gave you, when that's flowing properly, that produces fruit for the kingdom of God because you've got a bunch of energized people that have been equipped in the right zone, and they're all operating together, and it produces fruit. Every part does its share. Oh, I love. It. I'm going to read 16 again. From whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. What a great package! This whole little chapter is just this beautiful process of growing. But if Jim's not hitting his optimum goal, we're not hitting it together as a church, because he's still operating at a six when he could be at a nine. Let's say. You get my point? Not performance-wise, but just who he is and who he's supposed to be. We were together last night, and I said, how are you doing? He goes, I'm so excited about what's going on in the church right now. And, man, I would love to hear that answer from every person that I talk to, right? And I said, well, why? What do you think? And he just listed off a bunch of things just because that's, that's what he's been focusing on. So that's a good sign, right? That, that's the equipping process that's working, and then we want to give an avenue to everybody for that. 